Good day, YouTube. It is the 17th of July, 2022. This is my uh, 1993 Geo Tracker. Um, I've done many videos on it, and uh, you've been watching my channel. You know how much I really, really like this vehicle. It is my third Suzuki-based vehicle. Uh, I had a Samurai, 1988 Samurai Hardtop was my first. And uh, then, uh, oh gosh, how long has it been? 13 years ago or so, my wife and I bought a cabin on 20 acres in central Oregon and uh, needed a vehicle to get to the cabin and back, even summer and, of course, winter. And uh, I sought after a four-door version of the Tracker and found one. And we bought it. it actually had, uh, I don't know, like 30,000 miles on it or something from someone that needed to get out from under the payments on it. So we literally went to the bank and um, I wrote the bank a check for what he owed on it. And had that vehicle for quite a few years and then my wife really wanted an Explorer. So I sold that four-door Chevrolet Tracker. It was a 19... Uh, 98 model which was this body style in a four-door hardtop version with a 1600 16 valve engine in it obviously four-wheel drive five-speed <coughs> excuse me and uh, I always regretted selling that vehicle the Explorer was not the off-road vehicle that I thought it was supposed to be um, the tracker would go anywhere we wanted it to I had difficulty getting the Explorer even to the front door of the cabin a couple times. So I wasn't very happy with it. And ever since I got rid of my four-door tracker, I have missed having it. Um, I love my little two-door tracker. The, the couple things that the four-door had that I miss about it is that our four-door had uh, air conditioning. And we always used to take our dog with us when we go to the cabin and if we were to stop on the way there, way back for dinner or something, if it was hot, we always carried two keys and we left the rig running with the air conditioner on in the parking lot while we enjoyed dinner so the dog could take a nap in a nice, cool car in the summertime. Um, we enjoyed the extra room that it had. Plus, it rode a little better, being a little heavier, a little longer wheelbase, and it had a little more power. Um, this is an 8-valve engine in my 2-door. It had a 16-valve engine in the 4-door. So it had a little more horsepower. Um, my wife and I started talking about this last winter, taking a winter trip, see some ice sculptures and some things that were happening. I can't remember exactly what town in Oregon we were thinking of going to, but we, my wife wasn't interested in taking this vehicle on that adventure. And my Super Duty pickup, she's not a fan of its uh, rough ride. Um, it's just a also a tad inconvenient to park in some tight spaces so we were going to a town that turns into a whole winter festival um and you know getting in and out of tight parking lots and stuff i mean it's doable um i would do it but the, she wasn't a fan and every time we have these conversations i'm like you know what if we still had the four-door tracker four-wheel drive and i put the bf goodrich all-terrain ko tires on it and such that's the rig we would take and we would go um, we ended up not going um for whatever reasons and so forth. But again, I've always missed having my four-door tracker um, with air conditioning and all that. And I, I probably have always been looking for one, but I really stepped up my looking for one. And it's had to check all the boxes. Had to be four-door, four-wheel drive. Um, I wanted a 16-valve engine, more power. Um, and uh, you know all of that well there it is so this is a 1999 Chevy Tracker um, if you didn't know Chevrolet had these made they're obviously Suzuki based vehicles but they were made by a company in Canada this is the next generation if you will so Ours was a 98, which is the same body style as my 93. This is a 99. This is the first year for the new body style. Um, it's also the first year for the 2-liter 4-cylinder 16-valve engine. I'm a big fan of 5-speed 
transmissions. I think they're kind of sporty, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, however, my wife would much rather have the automatic. So I would have taken a four door either way, advantages either way. This one is an automatic four wheel drive. Um, again, the two liter four door. This vehicle was advertised. Um, it was in Central Oregon, um, a resort town called Sun River. And uh, Friday after work, I drove almost 200 miles to Sun River from work and picked this up. Came back as far as uh, Sisters, Oregon, where I camped in the camper overnight. Got up, hit the road at 4.45 a.m. yesterday morning and drove it on in. I just pulled in and parked. Um, my wife's kind of birthday week and we wanted to go to a, a town close to here and go yard selling for the day and that's what we did so I've only pulled it in and parked it I actually have never raised the hood on this because the engine is seized so the seller um, young guy um, said this is the only second vehicle he's ever owned he's not um, he's not mechanically inclined um, he's very much a craftsman woodworker builder but uh, not a mechanic and um, he has run this out of oil and the engine is toast so I have a couple of options um, a rebuild the engine that's in it B find an, a suitable used engine or buy a rebuild engine so I have many options in front of me I don't know the direction I am headed what I would like to do today is evaluate this vehicle as a whole really look it over um, and first and foremost let's see how stuck that engine is um, the thought process is and I've put a question on the groups page on Facebook for these vehicles um, if an engine was to run out of oil what seizes first the crankshaft or the cam so this is a twin overhead cam 16 valve with a timing chain the thought process in my head was if the last place that gets oil in a typical engine is the cams which I believe is the case here it may be the first place that starves for oil if the cams are locked up maybe all I have to do is just buy a new or rebuilt head and do a head swap on it if it is in fact a crank obviously it's coming out and we either got to find another one or rebuild what's in it um, if it's rebuildable the rebuild kits are five six hundred bucks that's pistons and all and then we have to deal with a crankshaft and uh, anything else that's damaged so certainly doable it, that would be a winter project at this point because um, I don't have a time um, and for those of you who follow my channel you may or may not know plan to retire in December I'm working on a construction project that will complete in December and that's the last project I'm going to do and I'm going to retire so believe it or not I plan to restore this vehicle not to pristine show condition when it's not what we're talking about here but um, when retired to do these little uh, winter road trips and that kind of thing this is the vehicle yeah we have 12 vehicles again but uh, I really really miss my four-door tracker I'm very very happy to find this one so first thing I want to do is get the hood up however that happens and uh, see what is wrong I don't know if we'd just be able to tell maybe we pull a valve cover today I don't know I want to leave it on the trailer for a little bit because I would like to take it to the car wash and kind of wash it off a little bit because um, I it's just been dirty it's dirty inside now all right let me stick you on hold for a sec all right, let's open this thing up. The the side molding's coming loose, and it's causing the fenders to get pushed in on both sides. So this is uh, something I got to fix quickly before it gets worse. Yeah, hang on. All right. So my tracker, the hood release is in the glove box. Not on this one. Let's go to the other side. See, I got a left rear slow leaker. Interesting. The tires aren't great, but they're not shot. Let's see if we can get the hood up. Want to see 
inside. It's dirty. It's not shot by no means, but it's dirty, but it, uh, it's pretty good. It's got 200,000 miles on it. Say I haven't had this open, so looking at it for the first time. Let's just see fluids. There is antifreeze in the catch can there. Whoa, radiator's full and green. Dipper sticker. Didn't grab a rag. Um, said he ran it out of oil, but it's down about a half a quart. Interesting. Did they put oil in it? It looks pretty dirty, though. It doesn't look like it ran out of oil and somebody put oil in it because it'd be clean oil. Okay, I'm going to try and turn the engine over um, by the pulleys. Not working. Ooh, door shut. Automatic door shut. So I'll get you in here so you can see. Sorry. Um. He said someone put a battery in it. Nine at twenty one. So it does have a new battery in it. She's a little oily. But what would you expect? I guess. Um. I, I tried to turn it just with the pulleys by hand and nothing's moving. Let's, uh, we really can't hurt it. Let's see if it cranks over or anything with the key. See what happens. All right, let's crawl up there. Ah. Kind of hard to work up here. Don't need to fix that quickly. All right, like I say, I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. They got lots of keys. All right, it's in the park. There goes nothing. I'm just gonna bump it. Shit, it cranks. He told me it was locked up. Ooh, it doesn't sound good, though. Start. Well, I really wasn't expecting that. I don't know what's going on, though. Well, so much for being locked up. Get up. Oh, Jesus, long step. Um, I'm not sure what to do. Hang on. I'm going to do something with these doors real quick. So it doesn't hurt any worse. Until I can get these properly cleaned up and glue these moldings back on. I'll get it taped so it quits screwing with the fender. 
got red duct tape, what little I got left of it. So what do you think's going on? I'm about tempted to pull the air breather off of it and shoot some ether in it. And... Let's see if it's got fire or whatever. I'm gonna get something in behind here and try and pull that fender out a little bit before it gets hurt. Like a gasket scraper. Oh yeah. Money. Let me do that to the other side real quick. All right, I'm giving you the best perspective I can. Um, got those doors temporarily fixed so they won't get any worse. Got them bent back out, actually. Pretty good. So I've got the air box loose. The uh, air filter is in reasonable shape. I see this front grill is missing all its fasteners on the top. Interesting. Let's shoot some ether in this thing see what happens. There we go. Set that there. This thing just got a bad fuel pump or something. It did something. Trying again. Should be enough for a small explosion. That didn't work. I don't know if we got spark or anything. So, um, guys, we're starting to get into more modern issues that I'm not that versed in. So, I'm gonna have to do some head scratching here. Um, it, it's not something I'm can just walk right through. But somehow I gotta see if we got spark. It tried to do something on that first crank but you know that ether is pretty volatile it could have just did something without spark I don't know all right I'm gonna put you on hold I'm gonna have to fiddle with this thing for a while all right gang I'm back up to my original plan I've sprayed the whole car down with simple green even under the hood headed to the car wash you guys wait here I'm gonna go wash this up and come back and we'll unload it and uh, not work on it on the trailer. And we'll try to see what's uh, up with this thing. I guess we'll pull some spark plugs out, see if she's got compression or what. I'll be back. All right, we are back from the car wash. Were you guys okay while I was gone? Good, cleaned up pretty good. Got under the hood, got door jams. All that stuff just drives me crazy. Anyway, it was worth the trip, even though I had to back into the, because I couldn't pull through with the camper on, I had to back into the stall. So. I have it also unstrapped, got the ramps down. My tongue's a little low at the moment, the way I'm parked kind of in a hole, but we're gonna roll it off of here. I thought I'd film it just in case it all goes bad. Here we go.
Well, we didn't take the fence out, but it was close. All right, I'm gonna take a little time, put the camper away, put the trailer away, pull the tracker up here next to the shop, and uh, we'll pull some plugs out of it, see what the hell. Catch you back in a minute. All right, we got the stuff put away. We got tracker number one hooked up. We're gonna tow it up closer to the shop. I got the brake set on the red tracker uh, a little bit so it drags so it doesn't run into me. Let's see if we can do this without drama. All right, we're gonna try this by hand. Rolled way too easy. All right, here we go. Come on, baby. From behind. That's a little closer. Well guys, I uh, had to take time to clean this thing out on the inside. It's just too gross for me to deal with. Uh, it's uh, It'll clean up real nice. I just vacuumed and kind of wiped things down a little bit. Y'all. Anyway. It uh, still needs good detailing. But it's had this aftermarket alarm system in, which I'm suspecting could be issues. Um, I pulled most of it out. Some of it's still attached. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Slam the door on the wires. Um, I've got uh, one of the coil packs pulled. Got a spark plug pulled. It's a fairly new plug. It's been running rich. I need to see if we got spark. I also threw a battery charger on it, so keep that battery up so let's zoom in on this because I can't see it while I crank it and uh, see if we got sparkage all right let's try it I smell fuel. Hmm, let's look. I need to review the video. All right, gang, here's what we're going to do. We're going to end this video here, get it edited, get it posted for you. And we're going to reconvene next week um, when the computer arrives. Hey, we're going to take it from there. Guys, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and thumbs up on the way out the door. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Stay tuned for episode two.